Giant Steve has been thought by many to be a legend in Minecraft. Tales of players being haunted by him have been present since the dawn of time. Recent findings tell us that Giant Steve is in fact real, and the terror that he unleashes is something to be feared. But what caused his bloodthirsty madness? Help us unravel the mystery of Giant Steve. Our story starts long before players. Back then, villagers were living in tribes and nomadic across Minecraft. The ancient builders, Steve and Alex, appeared almost out of nowhere as a protector of these villages. Alex, come quick! Steve and Alex quickly swooped into action and defeated these evil mobs. The villagers were grateful for their newfound friends. They were amazed at their technical skills and weapons that they were able to forge from ore. The ancient builders spent time teaching the villagers how to create structures. The villagers were in awe at their new levels of protection against the mobs. Steve helped lay the groundwork for a farm for the very first time, changing the course of Minecraft history forever. Alex, the more outgoing of the two, began to connect with the villagers, often being invited to village events and being praised for their newfound success in the villages. Steve, however, was the quiet type. He often spent weeks alone, mining in caves and quietly passing on his knowledge to the villagers. He began to feel disconnected and jealous that Alex was the life of the party. I just don't understand why they don't like me. It's okay, Steve. You just have to be yourself. Everyone likes you. Steve thought that Alex was just trying to protect his feelings. Regardless, he continued to teach the villagers his ancient skills. With technology rapidly advancing, Steve became less and less important to the villagers. Alex, on the other hand, became something of a folk legend around the villages. Stung by rejection, this made Steve want to prove to the villagers that he was worthy of friendship. Not to say that he wasn't liked, but as time passed, the knowledge of Steve became lesser as he faded away from the history books. Steve's biggest fear was that he would soon be forgotten. Now, this all came to a head one day when Steve tried to enter a new village that opened up in an arctic biome. Using Steve's knowledge, villagers had created iron golems to protect their villages, sworn to protect against any aggression towards the village. Steve made his way through the gates of the village, and before him stood one of the biggest iron golems ever created. Steve thought nothing of this, and proceeded to walk into the village. He was surprised when he felt the blow of the iron golem crushing down on his neck. Steve drew his sword and stopped the iron golem in his tracks. He was stunned that he wasn't recognized as a protector of the village. A villager ran out and screamed at Steve for taking out the iron golem. Steve was heartbroken at the villager's betrayal of him and thought about everything he had done for these villages. Steve's greatest fears were coming true. All he wanted was to protect this world against evil, but he felt like this world was turning its back on him. But Steve remained selfless. He knew that the villagers still had a lot to learn, and it was his responsibility to continue passing on his knowledge. Little did Steve know, a chance encounter was about to set off a series of events that would change Steve forever. One afternoon, Steve was on a mining mission. He was searching for a cave that he knew was rich with diamonds. He took a minute to gather his coordinates when he stumbled upon a witch in the distance. The witch took one good look at Steve and came over. Steve drew his sword, ready for a fight, but to his surprise, the witch didn't act hostile. Instead, they bonded. The witch explained its origin, being an outcast from her own village. Villagers hated the idea of practicing magic and out of fear banned her and many other witches across the world from their homes, leaving them here in these tiny huts. Steve asked why she didn't attack him. The witch looked out to the horizon and told Steve that she can feel the same sense of hatred lying in him. Steve finally gave in and confided in her about his recent feelings of unimportance and abandonment. She offered Steve a solution a small bottle of potion that was said to make him grow in strength and help widen his knowledge even more. Steve was intrigued, but smart enough to know that he needed to think twice before drinking a potion from a stranger. He kindly accepted her offering and continued on his way to mine his diamonds. 
A day later, Steve arrived back at the village that he was helping, and as he delivered his diamonds to Alex, he told her about his new potion. Alex was hesitant. Steve, you don't need to do this. You are great on your own. As Alex said this, a villager came up to them to ask Alex if she wanted to join the other villagers in a celebration for the diamonds that were just delivered. He gave no acknowledgement to Steve for his hard work in finding the diamonds. Alex told Steve to join her as she left with the villagers. Steve was left alone once again. In a moment of weakness, Steve drank the potion that the witch had given him. Feeling ill, he wandered out of the village and stood, staring at the stars. An overwhelming sensation ran over his body. He could feel himself changing, and with a loud flash, he collapsed to the ground. The next morning, Alex found him lying in the plains. Concerned for his health, she woke him up. To Steve's surprise, he felt rested and focused for the first time. He could feel a power overcoming his body, and he had grown a little in stature. He wondered if the potion had worked, or if it was just an illusion of his imagination. He assured Alex that he was okay, and he headed off into the biome to test himself. It wasn't long until Steve was confronted by a group of pillagers. They swiftly attacked him, but they were no match for Steve. With a single blow, Steve took each one of them down, a feat that no one had accomplished before. Steve continued on his rampage. He dove into the deepest, darkest caves in Minecraft. No mob stood a chance. His mining abilities were strengthened, and he found he had a new instinct for discovering rare ore and treasure chests. Steve was happy with his new found abilities. He certainly knew that word would spread about him, and for the first time in a long time, he was happy. Steve made his way back to the village, but to his surprise, he started to feel drained. And by the time he made it back, he was his normal self. He knew that no one would believe him, and if he really wanted to make an impact and help civilization the way that he had planned, he would need more of that potion. He struggled with this reality, but decided that the best thing to do was to travel back to the witch's hut to see if she could craft him another potion. Little did Steve know, there were much more sinister things going on behind the scenes. Steve woke up one morning and snuck out of his base, not to disturb anyone in the village. Part of him was ashamed that he was resorting to potions, but he wanted to make the best impact that he could on the world. He wandered back through the swamp, eventually finding the witch's hut. To his surprise, there was no one there, and it was empty. He stepped outside and called out to the witch. Then he heard a noise from inside the hut. He went in to investigate and found a potion floating on the floor. Thinking that he had overlooked this the first time, he grabbed the potion. He assumed that it was the same potion of strength that the witch had provided him before. He thought he would take it and come back again when its effects wore off. But there was something different about this potion. When Steve drank it down, he started to feel sick. He wandered, confused through the swamp, not knowing if he made the right choice. His body felt a massive surge of energy, and it was hard for him to focus. Steve knew that something was wrong. He made his way back home slowly, but he was shocked when his body grew. Like the stars aligning, his growth spurt shifted his brain back into focus. But he didn't feel like himself. When Steve got back to Alex, she looked at him in shock. He wasn't the person that he was when he had left. He was scarred, tall, and hostile. Steve apologized to Alex. He was unsure of what had become of him. He promised her that he did this for the benefit of humanity. Saddened by the new Steve, all Alex could do was trust her friend and hope that he was right. Steve tried to fulfill his promise, but it was obvious that his mind was clouded. He continued to grow, and soon his help turned into hurt. He became irrational and spiteful with the villagers, casually destroying villages that he felt like he couldn't help. The ancient builder that was loved by many was now feared by the people he swore to protect. In his confusion, Steve still had glimpses of what he had done. He was torn and ashamed of the mess that he had created. He missed his friend. He wished that he could go back to how things were before. When he finally did find Alex, she was filled with shame. She drew her sword to him. This stops now, Steve. Please, Alex, give me one more chance. You aren't the person I used to know. You're a monster. As Alex attacked him, Steve could hear her words echoing in his ears. Ashamed, he ran away from her and off into the woods. Word soon spread throughout the land about giant Steve. 
villagers fortified their bases even stronger, while pillagers seeked out to destroy him. Their ill-fated attempt only angered giant Steve more. He swiftly destroyed pillager outposts, and they soon too had to retreat. Steve had almost slipped into full-blown madness by his rage, but then the reality of the situation would snap back into focus. He was ashamed of what he had done and wanted to be cured. Why had this potion lasted so long? He made his way back to the witch's hut, screaming for her to show herself. He thought he was alone again. That is, until Herobrine appeared in front of him. Ha ha ha, fool. What did you do to me? I gave you ultimate power. Steve could feel his thoughts moving to anger. You will pay for this! Steve ran towards Herobrine in a fit of rage, but Herobrine quickly vanished. Angry and not knowing what to do, he searched all over Minecraft, looking for Herobrine. It is said that Steve wandered Minecraft for centuries, never to find Herobrine. But traces of Steve can still be found. Studies have shown that over time, Steve's giant footprints created the rolling hills and plains that we see today. Ships being destroyed, ravines, ruined portals, these are all a testament to a different time. Recently, there have been a few sightings of Giant Steve throughout Minecraft. Players have come back to their builds completely destroyed. Villages disappearing without a trace, and rumblings of footsteps as he still searches for his revenge on Herobrine.